welcome to free your mind. Where you are welcome to free your mind. I'm making this video tonight about the moon because it's a full moon. And we have a Friday the 13th coming up soon, right? Exciting times. My whole intention with this channel is to share with you things that I've learned, that I've picked up on, that I've come across in my life that are awe-inspiring, jaw-dropping, things that keep me fueled when I wake up in the morning with the feeling and a sense of gratitude. Things that when I think about it, when I see it in action, make me feel grateful to be alive. And I feel like we could all use a little bit more gratitude in our lives. So I wanna share with you some info about the moon because, well, me and the moon, we're well acquainted. We go way back, right? My astrological sign, I'm a cancer. And I'm not like an amateur astrologist or anything I don't claim to be. Um, but the fact that, um, that this exists and I know that it says that I'm a cancer and it means all of this about me, it sparked my curiosity and so I looked into it. But I didn't want to just look at the surface. I wanted to see like, Okay, is there any sort of rhyme or reason to this? Like, let, let me dig a little bit deeper. And so I did, and what I discovered blew my mind. And it's just a, um, you know, a, a thought exercise. You know, I, I'm good with my imagination. I'm pretty open-minded, which means that I'm able to accept information as true. I'm able to let it bypass whatever filters that I have going on in my mind that make me want to fight things, fight new information. I don't really do that. I have the choice, right? Because I'm open-minded to accept information and experience it and kind of sift through and take what's for me with me, you know, and leave the rest behind. So that's where I'm coming from. I'm not out doing like natal charts or whatever, so. But the moon in a lot of lore or myth, and legend, the moon is associated with usually a goddess of some sort. And this goddess, this representative of the moon is usually a goddess of fertility, right? Like the divine feminine, which is nothing in a sense. It is this accepting principle of life, right? It is the empty space in which all of this happens within, right? It's the silence in which all of what you're hearing is taking place within. It's the thing you never hear that's behind the scenes, right? This allowing, accepting, divine, feminine principle. The reason why the moon is associated with fertility in particular is because and this is more of a modern science. Modern science has recently picked up on this. Um, but the moon, right, and you know, and I know that the moon has a direct influence on all liquid that's here on planet Earth. All liquid, not just water, right? Like, not just like the ocean and the rivers and stuff, but even the water that you drink that forms your plasma that carries your blood through your body, right? Without water, your blood would just simply dry up and turn to dust. But water is very important. And the moon actually has a say-so, and it helps regulate women's menstrual cycles all over the planet. That's a modern science fact, not an ancient cosmology fact. So... The moon even has a say-so over bodily fluids. And this is why the moon is so cool and so mysterious. But in order for me to get a little bit deeper with you, I'm going to explain to you a little bit about the views in astrology, just basics, you know. So the sun, right, we live in a heliocentric solar system, right? Everything here is revolving around the sun. And so the sun has been revered as this, this 
life-giving principle, right? Like consciousness itself, just this pure energy seeping out of this thing that we call the sun that supplies all life on earth. And so the sun has been looked at as this great center of all life. And it's emanating this cosmic energy. And this cosmic energy in astrology is what makes up your personality and everything about you mentally and emotionally and spiritually. So everything needed to make you physically is here on earth, but your life is said to come directly from the sun. Your life force is said to come directly from this energy that is coming from the sun. This is how you have a mind and are conscious, right? So this is your consciousness emanating from the sun. That's what it represents, right? Now, Mercury, in mythology was said to be the messenger of the gods, right? He wore those little shoes with the wing on them, kind of like the Nike check mark, right? And I guess he needed to run real fast all over the universe, right? He was the messenger of the gods. And he was called the messenger of the gods because the planet Mercury is the closest to the sun. So this energy that is emanating from the sun hits Mercury first. So in the mythology, Mercury gets that message from the sun, from the great source, the all, you know, whoever, and takes off running with it, right? And this energy goes from Mercury out to whatever planet, right? The next planet. And it just bounces around, right? Mercury sends it over here and then it gets bounced over here like a pinball machine. Ding, 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 ding. As this energy, you know, goes through the atmosphere of whatever planet, it's bending it around itself and shooting it out to the next planet. And this is gathering the information that will eventually become you. And when it does its entire rounds through the planets, it hits the moon. The moon is like the last stop before this energy is catapulted straight into you at the moment of your birth or whatever. So the moon is like a satellite and it's, it's beaming this concentrated energy and depending, right, wherever you were born, when you were born, the stars were aligned perfectly and very specifically. And no one else on the planet right now shares that exact same makeup with you down to every angle. Someone could be born in the same hospital as you and take their first breath at the exact same moment as you, but your position is slightly different. Even if they are in the same room when they are born, you're not born right on top of each other, right? Even twins have a small variant in time, so this gets very specific. And that small variant in time can, with life experience, equate in a very large difference, right? In twins, twins aren't just exactly the same mentally all the time, right? So the moon gets all of this information and beams it into you at the moment of your first breath. And this becomes you. But even more than that, right? We already said that the moon has a say-so in regulating women's menstrual cycles all over the world. But what if I told you this, that that one sperm cell that made it before the rest of them, or that was the one that was accepted by the egg, that was the moon doing that. There's old beliefs that as the tide goes in, during high tide, this is the moon ferrying souls to the planet and the tide goes out and it's carrying them away and sort of recycling the energy and the energy is sent to the Milky Way where it is nursed until the next time it's ready. So the moon has this insane role in who you are, even if your astrological sign isn't a cancer or some other sort of water sign or something like that, right? The moon is just this amazing thing. Anyway, 
I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you want to, if you like it, then, you know, leave a comment and maybe I can go more in depth with this type of thing. If that's what you like, if not, I'm doing my own thing. So uh, just watch out for the next video. And for me to get, I, you know, I, 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 you know, I, 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 you know, I, 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 you know, I, I,